Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. We're joined with our contributor, Dr. Paul Corona, the author of Healing the Mind and Body, the Doctor and Patient uh, Guide. And I've been reading about uh, ADHD, autism, uh, and those kinds of disorders in the last couple of weeks. And I thought we would talk about attention deficit disorder in the 21st century. Dr. Paul, with all the many messages that we get each and every day, the millions of impressions that we get, it's no wonder that we're not all attention deficit you know, hyperactivity. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing to me. I mean, you're sitting in at your desk and the phone rings and you get an email, you get a, a text, you've got to read something, you've got to write something. My gosh, how do we get through the day? <laughs> well, you know, people, in, there's, there's very, varying uh, statistics. Some people believe like 5 to 10% of the population has, has this. Some people say up to 20, 25%. Well, we get through the day because the fact is when people, when a person has it and has lived with it, you kind of get used to it. And that just becomes the, the normal for that person. And, and people learn to adapt around the, around their, their ADHD. I, I, saw, I have a patient who's a very successful business guy. He has his own company, has a lot of employees. His secret without treating it has been to have really good secretaries and people who organize everything for him so that they tell him where to go, what to do. And he's been successful, but he's learned to adapt his environment around the, his ADHD, and he's still been, been successful. I'll give you an example of my morning, okay? And I don't think this is uncommon. Uh, I had to prep for the show. I had some video editing to do. I had to write a little bit of a script. I had to look over some video uh, 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 overviews that we're shooting in the next day or two. And I found myself skipping from one to the other and back and forth. And I, I, I finally said to myself, wait, focus, finish the radio, then you can go on to that video, then you can read, and then you can... is." I mean, I literally <laughs> had to force myself to do that. Right. And people with ADHD have, have difficulty with multitasking and, and, like you said, finishing things. So if you could have all these things going on, like you just said, and, and the logical thing would be, okay, let me just do this and finish this first and get that done. Then we'll move on to this and I'll do this next. But being able to do that sequentially doing tasks is not easy when you have ADD because the mind is mind is distracted and you look at this and you're looking there and it's just it's very difficult to just get one thing at a time done well i have no trouble multitasking i have trouble finishing (laughs) all those tasks that's the that's the issue and i'm wondering isn't it because of all the stimulation that we are getting today i mean even on television okay even though we record you know we put shows on 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 dvrs and we record the shows because we're going fast through a program now i can watch twice as many shows now i have to follow up you know i've got to watch you know four shows instead of two (laughs) what did we start oh we we started what was the show from the 90s uh it was twin peaks we started watching we watched the (laughs) The, um, the 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 first Twin Peaks from over twenty years ago, and I think that's coming back. Daryl, David Lynch, he was a very strange man. Well, I got to tell you, it was a very strange ninety minutes I watched. Yeah. And 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 if you had ADD or ADHD, you couldn't follow. No, it. you could enjoy it because it's so disjointed; it'll never make sense in order. And I always thought it was a. I always thought it was funny, and they're talking about a oh, no, it's gruesome not, murder. It's not funny. No, it it's, wasn't. It's, just, it's like saying Fargo is funny. It's not funny. No, not at all. It was, but it was, it was a. You know, you got all these things happening. How do you strain out? How do you filter out, Doctor Paul? Some of these elements that we we have i mean i've got to make a choice do i watch twin peaks or not watch twin peaks I, that's an easy one for me i'm not going to watch it <laughs> but uh, the other i mean 
the other things, I have to look at my texts. I have to look at emails. I have to answer my cell phone. Everybody does. Well, and in our computer age, you're right. It, it just makes, There's so many more options for things to watch and, and things on the computer, the endless. You're right. It, may, it's, it's even, it's, it makes it even worse uh, in, the, in, the, in the computer age, for sure. But, you know, people with ADHD normally will, will eat, like, do things that they like to do. For example, a parent might say, well, my kid cannot finish his homework, but he can play video games for hours and have no problems focusing on that. Well, people with ADHD have no problems focusing on things they really enjoy doing, but when it's something they don't enjoy doing, for adults, we're talking about paperwork and, and things that, that, that we, we really don't like to do, and they take a lot of focus and attention. Uh, those are the kind of things that we, people with ADHD tend to push aside and, and to do only when they really, really have to. Um, but when there's things that you really enjoy doing, the focus isn't a problem. I'm looking back at my life. I was not the world's greatest student except in some radio and TV classes and that was in college and you know <laughs> and and I didn't do so well in those I, I'm st- <laughs> that's what you were going to say Daryl <laughs> no is, I signed up for 12 units at Cerritos College and hung out at the radio station and, and <laughs> yeah complete and everything else that's it yep. that, I did the same thing I did and Mike did the same thing so Mike is our engineer here at um uh, at L, uh, L.A. Radio Studio, and we're we're so bombarded, and at the same time, there's only so many hours in a day. I mean, I got to take a couple hours to sleep. I've got to eat. You know, those are basic things. But with my waking hours, how do I? How do we organize our lives to filter out a lot of the crap, doctor? Well, that's this. Here, this is where medical treatment comes in because if someone is able with ADD, now again, you don't have to treat everyone with ADD. Some people choose not to be treated, and some people say, you know, I get by fine without. I've learned to adjust my job around the, my situation, my my disease. But with treatment, it really brings out the potential because because of the fact that it helps people with multitasking. It helps people to concentrate on doing what's most important first, saving that for later, organizing things. Um, not being so distracted with other things. And, and so that, that's where medical treatment comes in, which is highly successful, um, stimulants being the, the basis of them. But there's also non-stimulants that work well, too. Would that be why coffee doesn't seem to do much for me? Um, it calms me down <laughs> right. with, the, with the caffeine. Maybe, I'm, maybe I am a, do have a, a disorder, and, and maybe, maybe some... Some uh, some drugs would be uh, would be good for me. I mean, but not every everybody feels that way. The pressure of right. 21st century life. How do I know that I have ADHD or ADD? Well, you know, basically by you know doing some testing. Um, there's some written tests that you could take, and then you know meeting with someone like myself uh, to diagnose it. But you're but caffeine is actually fairly successful treatment. Uh, a lot of the natural products that treat ADD or try to treat ADD are variations of stimulants. And the number one stimulant in the world by far is caffeine. So some people that drink a lot of caffeine and it actually, like you said, it has a calming effect. Some people can have the coffee right before bed and go right to bed. Well, that explains, that explains a lot of people working in radio, actually, because the right. coffee pot is brewing 24 hours a day, seven days exactly. a week, and they, we, we drink coffee by the gallon. Right. So that that does make sense. I'm obviously being a little humorous here. Is ADHD a serious problem for an adult as well as a child? It's it's serious, not as as serious as in fatal, or as serious as in like with severe depression, where where there's people are suicidal. It's not serious in that way. It, it's, it's serious in the sense that, like I said before, is that the person true underlying potential is not being expressed because of the, dis- the disorder. Um, this is why treatment can help because it can, it can allow that person um, to, to be able to achieve what, even, even by, by hard work and perseverance, um, you know, medication still can help that person um, ease, ease that and, and make, it, make it a lot easier. 
<laughs> and it's not it's not a crutch. I mean, people think that that's a, a cop out or it's a crutch or that if you take a pill that and that you're cheating somehow. Um, you know, when I've had many patients I treat for this, and believe me, they'll they'll tell you that this has really helped change their lives for the better. And again, we spoke about it last week. What about the the controversy of using drugs? as a first line of defense rather than as a second or third line of defense to 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 cure to uh, alleviate the symptoms of ADHD or ADD well because of the fact that medications work so well but yeah it's i think normally before medication we try we try behavioral issues especially with with kids but with the, by the time you're an adult you know you pretty much tried you, you tr pretty much tried to adapt um, in, in your work situation to the to this order, and most people say I've, I've done about as far as I can go. I don't know anything else I can do behaviorally. Um, that this is why med medications are so successful because, again, they, they address the chemical aspect of it. It's not a, it's it's a, it, there's a chemical neurological basis of this disorder. And it has to do with the, the chemicals not connecting properly throughout the system. And it's not the fault of the person. Not the fault of the person. And, it, and the key the key is genetics. And if you, you've you got to look at your parents and grandparents and siblings, it runs in families. And it often wasn't diagnosed in previous generations before we had medications. But people can see patterns in their families. Oh, with my mom or my dad, you know, definitely I think he or she had it. It's more common in men than women. Um, but it's the basis is the genetics, and so that's not the person's fault who has it. And the person, like I said, doesn't have to treat it, but treatment of it, boy, it sure does. It sure does make a difference. It makes life easier. Uh, if you want uh, uh, to find out more, by the way, you can always go to uh, drpaulcoronamd.com. Drpaulcoronamd.com. Uh, he blogs all the time. He writes all kinds of articles and there's a wealth of material there. And of course his books are available as well, Healing the Mind and Body, uh, 1, 2, and 3. It's a trilogy and I think every healthcare provider should have this as well as families who have children so that you can take a look at options that may or may not be available to you. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. This is Late Night Health. In just a couple of moments we're going to be talking with Dr. Paul as we wrap up our discussion on ADHD and find out, a, maybe he can give us a tip or two about filtering our lives, okay? Maybe keeping our cell phone <gasps> off. I don't know how I could do that. Keeping my cell phone off while I'm trying to write because I get a text. I get a text, you get a phone call, and you your concentration is broken. So we'll ask Dr. Paul about filtering our lives rather than drugs in just a couple of moments. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. During hour two of Late Night Health, we're going to spend some time uh, with um, Dr. Chad Price, uh, medical director of the Institute for Better Bone Health, and we'll find out more about bone health and nutrition here as Late Night Health continues. And if you don't get Late Night Health, hour two, you can always go to LateNightHealth.com. Please like us on Facebook.com slash LateNightHealth. More coming up. Don't go away. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomers,